Okay, so let's take a quick tour of the interface here in Cinema 4D. So let's take a look at the top menu items here first. We call this the shelf, and these are typically the things that you are going to be reaching for the most while working here in Cinema 4D. Now you can change these out and you can put whatever you want. It's a very flexible interface system, and we'll look at how to do that. But let's just take a look at some of these items and what they do. Okay, so let's just start with the selection tool over here. So you've got a live selection tool, a rectangular selection, a lasso, and a polygon selection tool. These are very similar to what you would find in something like Photoshop. So I'm going to just show you, and don't worry about what I'm doing here. I just want to show you how these actually work. I'm going to go into point mode. You can see the points that are making up these polygons. I can also come over to a rectangle selection and select one like that, or I could select two. My lasso selection, very similar to Photoshop. And I've got a polygon selection, so I could do something like this. And I've selected it that way. So that's how that tool works, or those tools work. I also have the move tool. I can move my object around. We have the scale tool. And you'll notice that each one of these has a little information, the bubble icon that's coming up. So E on my keyboard is the same as going to the move tool. T is the scale tool. And R is the rotate. So if I click on the scale tool, I can scale this object. If I go to the Rotate, I can rotate, and you'll notice the bands, the X, Y, and Z bands are the same. Okay, so I can grab these, and I can rotate along a particular axis. This is the last tool that was used. So if you click on here, we can see that these are the last tools that we used. It just keeps a running total, I should say. I want to skip over these right now. We'll get to these at a later time. This is my render view, so if I click on that, I'm going to render my current view. If I come over here, render to picture viewer, I'm going to render to my picture viewer. Control or Command R to do the render, or Shift R to render to that picture viewer. I have my render settings over here, and we will go into these in a later movie. But uh, this is where my render settings are input. This is where my primitive objects live. So if I click and hold, and by the way, if you see a little black triangle, that means that you can hold down and there will be more menus underneath. So if I wanted to get rid of this cube and I wanted to hold down on here and put a figure in there, then I've got that. I also have my drawing tools. My drawing tools are in here, so I can draw freehand, and I have some different specific drawing tools for B spline, linear, cubic, Bezier. And some of these may sound familiar from Photoshop, but these are just different ways that I can draw. Just to give you an idea, freehand, I can draw a line like that. I could grab a Bezier. And this works very similar to Bezier pen tool that's in Photoshop. I've also got my text tool here. And we'll go into more of these in more detail. But these are what we call our spline tools. Go ahead and delete these. Over here we have our generators. And so these are different objects that are going to need another object to work on. For instance, if I come over here and grab the text tool, and then I put an extrude down here, put it underneath the extrude, then something actually happens. It generates some geometry here for me. And each one of these does something different. And again, we will talk about these in later movies. Okay, so we can get rid of this. Next, we have our modeling objects, and we have several different things that we can do here. Again, go into these at a later time, but these are considered our modeling objects. We have our deformation objects here. 
Let me just show you quickly how that might work. If I take a cube, and again, don't worry about what I'm doing here, but I'm going to give this some segments. And I'm going to convert that. And I'm going to stretch it up. So I want to hold the Shift key down and click on the Bend Deformer. And that way it puts the Bend Deformer underneath the cube. We click on the Bend now and we play around with the strength and angle. You can see that we're getting some interesting results in there. So those are the deformers. Next we have our environment objects. And these do some very specific things here in Cinema 4D. And we'll go into these as we progress through the title. We have our lighting over here. And these are the different lights that we have here in Cinema 4D. If we continue around, we have our object manager over here. And this is going to list anything that is in the scene. So right now we have nothing in the scene. We have nothing in the object manager. We put a cube in the scene. You can see that we have a cube in the object manager now. Now I can change the name of the object over here in the object manager to something like box. I can turn the object on or off. I also have these two dots. Now right now they're gray. If I change them to red, that's going to turn off the object visibility in the viewport, but if I render, it's still there. If I click this dot down here, that's going to turn off the render visibility. So now if I render, nothing. So I could actually have this one grayed, this one red. You could see it in the viewport, but if I rendered, you would not see it. So these are called the traffic lights. We have what's called a Fong tag, which every primitive object in Cinema 4D comes with a Fong tag, and this has to do with the shading that you see on the object. And we can get into this at a later time as well. We have another button here, which allows us to put our object on layers. But we're not going to talk about that right now, but just know that you can use layers here in Cinema 4D. Now, if you look over here to the right, we have some tabs. And right now, this is the Object Manager tab. So we're seeing the Object Manager. We have the Content Browser. And we can come in here and we can grab things like presets that we have in Cinema 4D. And we'll look at that a little later. Go back to the Object Manager. Down here, we have our Attribute Manager. This is going to allow us to make changes to the object that we have selected in the object manager. So let's go ahead and put another object in here. We'll put a sphere in here. And we'll move the cube over. So when I have the sphere selected in the attributes manager, I have the ability to make changes to my sphere. I'm going to go ahead and turn the display to shading with lines so that we can see this. So you'll see when I have the sphere selected, I can make changes to that. If I increase the segments of the sphere, you can see that changing interactively here in the viewport. Same with the box. If I select the box. I can come over here and make changes to the segments here, and you can see those segments updating dynamically in my viewport. You've got quite a few different things that you can do with your objects. Some of the basic things you can do is you could actually use a color on your object. And you could change that. You could enable X-ray mode. And this is very, very helpful when you're doing things like modeling. If you needed to see through your object, you could turn the sphere on, click on X-ray, and now we can sort of see through that and see what we're doing. We could play around with the visible in editor and visible in renderer. And those things do the exact same things as the traffic lights that we talked about earlier. If we run over here to the coordinate tab, we can control the X, Y, and Z of our objects, as well as the scale. If we wanted to take the scale up, we could do that here as well. We also have the heading, pitch, and bank. And let me go ahead and select the box. I'm going to hit O on my keyboard to sort of frame that up. Let's select the box. 
hit O again. There we go. And if I adjust the heading, you can see how it's affecting it. This is the pitch. And this is the bank. So it's kind of interesting that they use aeronautical terms. Moving along, we have our material manager. And if I double click in the material manager, I'm going to get a material. If I double click on the material, I get the material editor. And this is where we can come and design our materials however we want them. So let's just say we wanted to choose a blue color. And I'll come out here a little bit and I'll take this and I can drop this either on the sphere. Let's turn off the x-ray for the sphere. And I could also select that material and delete it. I could also put the material on the sphere by doing it this way. If we go back into the material, you can see that we have a ton of parameters that we can control here. So we could control things like luminance, how luminant the material is, how transparent it is, the reflectivity of the material. So all of these are very powerful ways to control the look and feel of your material that is going to be on your object. Just above the material manager, we have our timeline, and this is how we animate in Cinema 4D. And these controls all pretty much have to do with animation, keyframing, setting keyframes, and that sort of thing. We have position, scale, rotation over here, and we can turn these on and off so that if we only wanted to affect the position when we were animating, we could turn everything else off, and then we would only be animating the position. Usually you keep these all on. This icon over here has to do with point level animation. That's not something we're going to cover in this tutorial. We could come over here and we could adjust the playback rate. So if we wanted to go with a different frame rate, we could control that here. Moving on, we have our object make editable. So basically what that does is if we have a parametric object like the sphere, right now the sphere is put together using mathematical equations. But if we wanted to break this down so that we could edit, and I should also say it's not editable right now, you can't actually go in here and grab any of these individual polygons. So if we wanted to put it into a state that you could edit these polygons, we would click on Make Editable or click on C on your keyboard. Now we can come in here and grab some of our tools, our polygon tools, and let's say we wanted to make a selection here. We could just select these polygons and let's say that we wanted to pull these out we could right click go to extrude and now we're affecting just those polygons and that's because we made our object editable if we select this object the box it's not possible to have this sort of control over this object in this parametric state. So in order to do that, we need to make our objects editable. These icons have more to do with texturing objects, and we'll get into that when we talk about texturing. This allows us to grab edges on our objects that have been made editable. So if I wanted to come over here and grab an edge on this sphere, I could do that like that, and I've selected some edges. I could also go into point mode and select some of my points. We have a way to enable axis mode, which we will cover at a different time, and we also can enable snapping for different objects, and we will look at that a little later as well. Okay, so that's a quick tour of the interface. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed, don't be, because by the time we're finished, you're going to understand all of this.